There's this person's point of view, and then there's another person's point of view. And in that point of view is the truth. Yeah, yeah. Seek the truth. Don't seek the sensationalized statements that are made out there mm. because they sound good, mm, because mm, they feed the narrative. Yeah, they're well. clickbait. Yeah. They're, yo, oh, famous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't sit on the clickbait. Yeah. Search for the truth. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Uh, so today in case Noyanda Ramam. <laughs> How do you know that? I'm good at what I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good. You're does she good. call you that? Yes, she does. Till this day. Till this day. You, I, I, I prob you probably don't know my nickname, which is good. Because <laughs> that's the answer. Damn. That <laughs> so you're good, but you're not that now. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're good. But yes, she still calls me that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that means you guys are very close. Yes. Yeah. We are. Um, what does having a mother who is that present in your life do to you? I think it's just not even about a mother. It's just about having a parent that's that close to you, whether mm -hmm. it's your mom, your dad, an aunt, a grandmother. Mm -hmm. It's that one person that is always affirming sure. and protective mm -hmm. um, of who you are to them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but who mm -hmm. you are to the world. Um to have a parent, um, and this just goes beyond your biological parent, mm -hmm. to just have umuntu who's willing to give of themselves just so that you can have a decent life and mm. learn to be a decent person mm. and be a good person out there in the world to protect you, to guide you. It means the world. It really, it really, really knits into the fiber of who we are and who we become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that level of affirmation yeah. builds a confidence that is is, is almost unbreakable, Absolutely. right? And life has uh, troughs, highs, dips, um, challenges, people yeah. who don't like us, situations that we go through. Yeah. But if you are steadfast in who you are and saying, I'm this confident person, you're able to go through the emotions. And you're that confident person because of who you've always had in your corner. Sure. If it's a parent, if it's a friend, if it's a community, yeah, yeah, you constantly yeah, yeah. face whatever highs and lows life delivered to you because you've been given that confidence, that affirmation from where you come from to say, like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. when we still know you as this person. Yeah. That you know yourself to be and what we know you to be. What everybody else thinks they know. Or, or believes they know, or make you out to be. Mm, mm, mm. We know who you are. And and in essence, like you say, you can go through anything in life, mm -hmm. but as long as you have that affirmation, yeah, yeah, as yeah. long as you have that sense of protection, you know you can get through whatever you go through. Would you say that perhaps that's the reason we have so many social ills in this country, um, social ills that even develop into crimes, because mm -hmm. people are, are, are desperate, they don't know who they are, they don't know who to run back to, they don't have that corner that they go to, they don't have communities. That's actually a very powerful thing, um, a very powerful statement that you make, because I do think it, it is true. We face a lot of social ills because whoever the perpetrator of social ills mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm is a person who typically does not have that fallback, does not have that protective space that they can always fall back on where they can say, Uguti, we know you, we, 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 we affirm you, Uguti, you are this person. And even if it is there, maybe within themselves, they don't believe that it is true or it is genuine. And as if you sometimes study... Um, your serial killers. Yeah, or yeah, serial yeah. There is a pattern. Or, there is a pattern. Yeah. And it's always that there's always been some kind of a gap in their childhood. Sure, sure. That has always fed into who they become mm, when mm, they're mm, adults. Mm, mm, and who they are when they're adults and perpetrators of that crime. There is a direct correlation or relationship 
that transcends from when they were younger to when they are older and they are perpetrators of this crime. There's always a gap where there's this thing that is missing. It's either some kind of affirmation, some kind of protectiveness, mm -hmm. some kind of a comfort, whether it's from a community or a family that says you belong here. Mm, 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 here mm, we mm. have your back. Yes, here yeah. we will claim you irrespective yeah, of yeah. what happens to you out yeah. there. And oftentimes when we see perpetrators of crime or perpetrators of social ills, mm -hmm. we'll always track back to the fact that there was a gap somewhere in their lives that contributed to who they became in their adulthood. Can we so still fix it? It's fixable. Mm -hmm. Look, um, no person is an island. No one exists in a vacuum. Okay. You know, and even if you don't have Abantu Baikini um, of your blood relation that maybe you care for you, you can always build a community of people that yeah. will always care yeah. for you, that will yeah. always be there for you. I'll exist to mm -hmm. in a world. Um, a church is a community. Uh -huh. um, where you live is a community. Yeah, yeah. Your workspace is a community. Correct. Um, your colleagues are a community. Uh, so you, you can never exist in a silo on your own. Wherever you choose to implant yourself or, or where, where you place yourself, you can create a community that can have your back within that space. I want to take it back a bit since I started this conversation with saying, Yan Daga Mama, mm. um, are, are you growing up in a family unit that is strong as well? Because to see you being so convicted in family, in, 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 in community, it says to me that it's either she grew up in that setup or she has had to heal and learn, relearn and build herself to be the woman that she is today. Mm. So, oh, 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 uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, was she the woman who's so convicted about understanding family unit as she is right now? I believe so. Um, I believe uh, um, a lot of who I am today is rooted in how I was raised. Okay. I was raised in a solid family unit. Um, it might not be a conventional unit uh, where my mother and my father were married, but I had a very good relationship okay. with my father. My parents had a very good relationship. I was never deprived of any kind of a relationship from any parental perspective. I knew my father. I had a great relationship with my father. My father passed away. Yeah, I have yeah. a great relationship with my mother, but I have a great relationship with my family as a whole. I hear you. Sikule, sisonke. Nibambene. Sibambene. Yeah. And even the community that I come from, yeah. Kulele Protea North, yeah. I grew up in an amazing community yeah. because we all knew each other. Yeah. We all had each other's backs. Sure. So we... we I've always understood the concept of of family and the concept of community in that space. I grew up in the church. My church is my family. So I've always been in a space where um, it might not be as traditional or conventional that people want it or envision that it should be. But I've always been in a close-knitted family unit, whether it's my community, my church, or my direct blood relatives. Mm, mm. I've always had a sense of togetherness. And as a result, uh, I, I firmly say that it has informed the person that I am today. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people who are watching this will, will see the, the, the thumbnail and the title and they will click because the picture is of this lady they know from, from TV who's yeah. an actress, right? Yeah. But there is another side of you that is a journalist, as 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 you informed me. Yeah. G give me a picture into the journalist side, and how did it happen? How did it manifest? Gosh. What's the journey been there? <laughs> so, I um when I was in matric in high school, I went to a school called Rao Kaul Metropolitan Rao Kaul, which was okay. a feeder school to uh, then Rao University, which, which is in now UJ. UJ. Yeah. And um, we we were it was an academic purely academic school. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any sport. The only extracurricular we had was debate and choir. Yeah. So naturally, when the debate team started, I was in the debate team, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I was always in the choir, and I've yeah. always been in the choir since I was in primary school. Yeah. So in our year, when we were in matric grade eleven, we started the debate team, and we started doing these debates under the South African Institute of International Affairs, which is under Fitz University. Sure. And we'd we'd form these debate uh, teams as different schools in the province, 
and we would debate United Nations style debate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you'd have a general assembly, you'd be assigned a country, you'd be assigned a topic. Wow. <laughs> and you'd have to debate the your assigned country's foreign policy stance My on goodness. that particular topic. topic. Yeah. So it required for us to do a lot research. of research. Yeah. So we did that. Our, our team did really well. We were one of the... Uh, two teams at my school and some gentlemen from St. John's High School, mm -hmm. we were given the opportunity to form one team that would represent South Africa in New York. And we did the same thing. And we were assigned the country, Jamaica, mm -hmm. if I'm not, mm -hmm. not, not mistaken. And we did extremely well. And I asked myself, what did I want to do uh, when I leave uh, high school? What do I want to do? And I wanted to become a lawyer. Yeah. And my mom was like, mm -hmm. I don't know about law, you know. So I was like, okay, let me try political science. I still want to become a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, let me do political science. So I studied political science and I specialized in international relations. But when you're living in a country like ours, where the unemployment rate for young people is so high mm -hmm. that many of us study what we study, but we never end up in that going yeah. into that career. Yeah. When I couldn't find a job in governance, um, in public service, sure. I had to like, figure myself out, what do I do? Because And be idle. I yeah. have always been working since I was in matric. You know, um, I'd go to school, find a, a peace job, yeah. I'd go to varsity and keep a job somewhere. So I never wanted to be idle. So when I, let, when I, when I graduated from the University of Pretoria, I specialized in international relations, there was One Day Leader. Mm -hmm. I signed up for that. You've been on One Day Leader. Season one. I, I remember. Oh my gosh, it's clicking. I, I had, watched that religiously. I had an Afro and braces. Yes, that yes, me. yes. That I, I under. Did, yes. <laughs> so I did that because I felt okay. And the debating skill that show refines is insane. Right. Yeah. And and I was a little, um, I, I won't say I was a little self-conscious. I had not come out of my shell yet. Sure. I knew there was something in me, but mm -hmm, I just had mm -hmm. to come figure myself out along the way. Yeah. So I did that. And after I did One Day Leader, I figured, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. And while we did One Day Leader, we would go to tomorrow's leaders' conventions. We'd go to so many conventions where we'd meet people. And I just thought, let me go through some of these business cards. Let me see where I can get a job. Mm -hmm. I found a business card of an executive at ETV. I wrote the executive an email. I said, wow. well, I did well on One Day Leader. This is what happened. Um, I'm looking for work and I'm willing to do whatever you guys uh, have that is available. I, I'm, I'm willing, willing to, to start, start at, at the, the bottom. bottom. Yeah, I'm yeah. literally willing to start at the yeah, bottom. And work my way I'm up. I'm willing to learn. Yeah. Um, I don't have any experience in television. The only experience I have is One Day Leader, but I'm willing to learn mm -hmm. and I'm willing to work hard at it. And I was given the opportunity and I joined Sunrise, the morning breakfast show. So that was my first stint of television. But as a morning breakfast show, you do a lot. You do entertainment, you do sports, but you do current affairs okay. and politics okay. and you do business. Mm -hmm. And when you, um, when you propose a story that we need to cover, sure. you need to propose an angle and you need to do research. Hmm. So you need to wear a journalistic hat. Mm -hmm. That's where that comes from. Yeah, so yeah. whatever we put out on the t television screen, whether it's from an inter entertainment perspective or sports or particularly business and more especially business and politics, we always have to research, go find the backstory, go find the history, go find the information. What is the supporting information that you have? And that's where the journalistic element of it came came about. I'm not a journalist by profession. I hear you. But I, I worked you. in journalism. I hear you. I used to work for this morning breakfast show. And that's where it all started. I'll come back there. What was that first job you spoke of, that first peace job? I when I uh, when I uh, finished my matric, I was looking for a job. Yeah. I was a promoter. I used to work for a a marketing company. Yeah. I used to have various clients. Okay. Mentor suites, some, <laughs> yeah. whatever. So, well, are you standing in the shop yes. saying you have the suite? Yes. <laughs> I would stand in the shop and I would try this mentor suite. Yes. You'd have to, or at first we our biggest um our client was Samsung. So I used to go to Abu Edgar, see yeah. uh, the, the cell phone shops. Yeah. And then they used to have, I can't remember what that, it was an E250, I think. The sliding one. The sliding one. The sliding one. Yes. Was like, yes. That was the first cell phones that came out and we had to promote those cell phones. Yeah. So I'd get a handset yeah. for a weekend. Oh, wow. And I'd have to go and promote it at stores and I'd show people how to um, use, use it. it. Yeah. And that would in turn uh, gain uh, sales for that particular shop because people would then start buying Correct. that phone. Correct. So I had to research the phone. I had to uh, understand how it works. I had to understand the features. Then every single time I'd have to get a new headset, I'd have to take that one back, get a new phone. Yeah. I had to study it and go promote it. So that was my 
essentially first job, but I kept that job until I finished my varsity. That is, it used to pay for a lot. That is insane. Yeah. What, 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 what does that do to a person, um, 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 especially a young person? Because we all have dreams that are bigger yeah. than, than remaining in that foundation job. Yeah. Um, but what does it do to you in your latter years? Like yeah. now, when you look back, you like the lesson learned of going to Edgar's and saying, hey, do you know that this has a one megapixel camera? Oh my right. gosh, one megapixel. <laughs> Back in the days. Back in the day. Or a VGA even. Yeah. What does it do to you like now when you look back? For me, humble beginnings are so important. Sure. Because it doesn't matter what you call mm. Start somewhere. To start. Because wherever it is that you start, yeah. you're always learning something about your environment, but more importantly, about yourself. Mm-hmm. We as you, when you're a marketer, you have to be able to speak to people. Convince. You have to be able to convince yeah, people. Yeah. That is a skill that could help you in your later life, depending uh-huh. on what job you take. When you're negotiating yeah. a 30 yes. million rand deal. When you're negotiating your own salary. Yeah. When you have to place to the person in front of you why you believe you are valuable. Hmm. Why you deserve this. Prove your value. Prove your values because you can sit and say, I know this phone is valuable yeah. because of this, this. Yeah. And this is why you should also have it. Yeah. It's, it's something that you don't think of that deeply but it's a skill that we are mm-hmm. and it becomes uh, embedded in you and the more you progress in life you take those lessons with you even mm. if you start as a cleaner sure cleaner in ibe spotless ibe clean and you take pride in this thing Martin Luther king <laughs> that you are meticulous yeah. you pay attention to detail and you apply yourself fully in this thing. So you deserve a raise because I see you're a person that pays Correct. attention Correct. to detail. Next thing you know, you are sitting there, you're studying books. And mm. you're like, Kona i amount de misayola. Mm. Why? Because you're meticulous. Yeah. You pay attention yeah. to detail. Correct. You follow a system yeah. and a, track, a way of tracking things. Mm-hmm. So mm. in mm. life, mm. everywhere, every space that you find yourself in, there's always a lesson to be learned about that environment, but also about who you are. Impilo and the things that we go through have an amazing way of teaching us and building who we are and who we become in later life. Uh, 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 it, it echoes. Um, I'm going to paraphrase Martin Luther, Martin Luther King um, Jr. He said, um, if you are a street sweeper in New York, be known as the best street sweeper of, in that area. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the principle you're sharing, that if you maintain the principle, no matter at what level you are in, mm. the, principle, the principle breeds a new level. Absolutely. You know? And, I mean, for the young people, for example, that are working to see themselves through school. I mm-hmm. mean, when I was working, the money that I was earning was helping me a lot. I used to be able to buy my own textbooks. Mm-hmm. I used to sing for a university for choir, the tax camarata. That's how I would pay for my choir uniform. Sure. That's how I would pay for some of my choir trips. You know, w- when you are working towards a goal, um, you know that your hard work has end results. Mm-hmm. So you don't slack. Mm-hmm. You don't take it lightly. But also, for example, if you're a waiter, if you're a young person and you're a waiter and you do such a good job, there are people that come back and say, I go back to the shop because there's this lady or there's this gentleman. Mm, 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 mm. That thing will follow you to your workplace because people will keep you. Your boss will keep you. If you are the boss, you you will keep your business afloat because you are that person on a snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is a Wesley South African Christmas? Ah. (laughs) <laughs> a Wesley South African Christmas is this amazing film that we shot about uh, three weeks ago yeah. in Durban. Okay. It's actually uh, an American film produced by an American production company called Octet Productions. Yes, yes. And it's fa- it's part of a, a franchise called a, we- uh, a Wesley's, um, um, Wesley's Christmas, Okay. if I'm not mistaken. And that was the first installment. The second installment was uh, the Wesley's wedding. Okay. And now this is a Wesley South African family. Basically what it is, is it follows the Wesley family who are actually from the United States. Okay. Throughout their life journey. So does it have anything to and do with Wesley, the church? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. It's just the family. The surname is Wesley. Okay. Um, so the first installment was Christmas. The second installment was wedding. This installment is uh, the South African Christmas. Okay. So the Wesley family come and visit the Lamini family I hear in South you. Africa. I hear you. 
um, Temba Lamini, which is uh, the one of the sons in the Lamini family, who sure. studied in the United States, okay. met up with the Wesley the family. Wesley family. And they totally loved him. And when he was finished with his studies, he came back home, but he's kept the relations. And so in an attempt to convince his family of a business deal between the Wesleys and the Laminis, he brings the Wesleys to South Africa. And we try and see what happens with the Jaminis and the Wesleys. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's, what, what's, what's so significant about the merging of the two worlds? Because um, the, the American entertainment industry, Hollywood, yeah. perhaps, is such at a grander scale than what we are doing. But why was it important for the world to merge? It's quite interesting that you'd say it, because not, ho not only Hollywood is, is such a grand scale in the United uh, States, but there are so many amazing filmmakers that are working outside of Hollywood okay. that are doing such amazing work. Um, Atlanta is such a growing and a booming film industry. Mm -hmm. We know it. Why? Because of Tyler Perry and Tyler Perry's career. Correct, correct. And then we have Octet Productions. They're based in Washington, D.C. Okay. There are so many amazing filmmakers in America that we don't know from the top of our heads because the first thing that we see is Hollywood, which is not a bad thing. Yeah, you yeah, build yeah. your film industry in a country so it is reputable at that level. I hear you. But it's so, it's so amazing that actually in South Africa, we are par on par. <laughs> our film industry in South Africa is amazing. Exceptional. It's exceptional. Mm. And it is still growing. And so this collaboration was important to show that, yeah, to show that yeah, in yeah. South Africa, there is skill, there is capacity, and there is talent. Why should I watch the movie? You should watch the, you should watch the film, number one, if you really love watching films, but you should watch it to see the level, the high level of skill that uh, is presented to this international community sure. as a result of this collaboration with yeah. South Africa and the United States. Yeah. We should see the skill that comes with the performances, the actors that are on this film. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, these are highly skilled yeah. performers. Professionals. These are highly skilled crew members. And you should watch this film because you will get to see how a collaboration like this, how skilled people like the crew and cast we have in South Africa are able to rise up and match up what we see on an international platform. That, 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 that makes so much sense. So you, you've pivoted into film but many still know you because obviously the film is not out yet. Yeah. Many know you for being with Tandiswa on, yes. on, on Smokes and Mirrors. Yeah. How is Tandiswa and Ayanda different or are they similar? Um, I think not only just to Tandiswa, but I think in the many characters that we see on Smoke and Mirrors and actually any other show that you'd watch, more especially any other show that I've been on, there's always something that we can take as a relatability with okay. every character. Okay. Because Umundu is multifaceted. Uh, Umundu is not one-dimensional. Sure. We are multi-layered, and so we go through so many things in life that inform how we respond to life. Um, so in a, in, in a way, Tandiswa and, um, and, and Ayanda are similar but different. Mm -hmm. There are life challenges or life ebbs and flows that they go through that I can find relatability to, and then some you can't find relatability to. But there's no way that you can portray a character without drawing some kind of similarity with from the character. From yourself. From yourself. I hear you. I you hear know. you. I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. You have to find within you as an individual mm, what mm. you can relate to, to the character that mm -hmm. you are reading and you are asked to present. And you draw that parallel so you can give... Uh, an, authentic, an authentic performance. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I grew up in a close-knit family, I'm a very independent person. Sure. I, I try not to burden people with any of what I go through in life. So I want to be able to do it on my own. Listen the load. Let people carry the load or help you carry that load. Tandis was that person. Yeah, Tandis yeah. was the type of person who stands alone. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to bother anyone with anything. She just wants to find a solution to a, a problem that she's facing and she wants to just do it on her own without impacting on the people around her. But true as life is, there's nothing that you can do implications on other people. And those are the similarities that, uh, that we draw. She tries to trail a blaze on her own, fighting her own life battle without having to include anyone. But 
naturally, because it's life, life has people in it. Whatever you do, whatever decision you make, whatever move you make, will always have some kind of implication to the people that are around you. So there are some similarities. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some differences, but that's human nature. That's who sure, we are. Sure, sure, sure. Um, there's a young girl out there, um, she's in Cape Town, she's in Pretoria, Soshanguve, Mamelodi, Soweto even. Um, she doesn't have the access that you've been privileged by God to get to be able to even play the roles that you have. Um, some She's struggling to pay her fees in EFTA, um, but her dream is to be a Tandiswa on Smokes and Mirrors. What are the behind the scenes challenges that these this young lady doesn't know exist and that she has to stand strong and face when she gets to that point in her life. First, I'd like to say, Uguti, I can do that he can gift you that he won't be able to see you through sure. in getting what he has gifted to you. Yes. Yeah. The only thing is just timing. Yeah. Timing is very important. Yeah. And sometimes in you no know, is not a this never is not for you it's not a never yeah it's just a not now sure. and that's one of the biggest challenges that many people don't realize about this industry in this industry there are actually more no's than there are yeses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the time you see me as tandy so on a screen i've gone through a thousand no's <laughs> and those thousand no's should i be I'm, in this should i I'm not still worthy. keep I'm not going i'm not worthy i'm not worthy but it's not a never <laughs> if you are truly gifted and talented and God has given you this gift to do this. And every single day when you wake up, all you want to do is this. And you hone the skill. You go to acting workshops. You you go and you go to after. And even if you don't afford it, and you work at eh, a restaurant, mm. waitering tables, or you're working at coffee shops, just to make lay your tuition money, mm. or go to Oham, you're from the after. If that is the fiber that is within you, God will never allow you to fail. Sure. Because he sees you. He sees your struggle. He sees the effort that you put in. Mm. And he says, I'm going to top it up. Mm. Bless. I'm going to top it up. I'm yeah. going to top it up yeah. and I'm going yeah. to bless yeah. you. Yeah. But no, Ugutilendlela comes with challenges. Yeah. It comes with more no's than yeses. It comes with more early mornings and late nights mm. than you're able to say, yes, I'm coming out with you tonight. Mm. There are more of those. I can work a 16-hour day. People don't know this. Yeah, yeah. And it's taxing. It's tiring. Sometimes it's not ideal. In fact, it's not even allowed. But there, there are circumstances where you go over time. Yeah, you want yeah. to finish because you're dedicated. So, to this thing. so, so. And you do it. We have a lot of sleepless nights. You want to give the best you performance. Give, you want to give the best. We have a lot of sleepless nights. We have a lot of early mornings. We have I have a lot of in betweeners. You know, but umuitanda into, and you've dedicated yourself to doing it. All these no's, all these late nights and early mornings, they become part of the journey that you have to walk to get to where you want to be in terms of what you want to do. Um, I know you'll give me honesty because that's all you've been giving me all along. Uh, there's the painful element of being a public figure yeah. where people are so invested in your private life. Yeah. Um, they're so invested in things that do not concern them. There's to the fact that there's a level of vitriol that happens on the internet nowadays that has become the norm, yeah. which scares me yeah. because you're acting like you don't know that this, this is a human being, this is a person who has feelings, and you can't go around saying anything about other people mm -hmm. because if this was your next-door neighbor, you wouldn't go to them and say that thing. If this was your mother, if this was your brother, you'd know how much it hurts to yeah. say certain things about them yeah. and how putting them in a negative light can affect their life yeah. um a lot okay not a lot but you know what i mean a, a few things have been blown out of proportion on the internet about your personal life mm -hmm. did you feel it was fair in the manner that it was done when things were blown out of proportion about your personal life and have you been able to heal and move on from that you know one of the first things that i wrote on my instagram story when a big blowout happened, happened. On, yeah. on, on my socials. And mind you, I'm not a mutu that's, um, I, that puts my life out there like that. And I do it intentionally because my life is my life. It's yours. I, I'm, I'm, I'm entitled to direct how I want to present my life. Um, but one of the things that I said was, it's really important that when someone does something, you search and you think, of what the intention of that person is. Huh. 
when they do this particular thing. Huh. Intention and motive are always very important. Yeah. Because in Angagi Valley's come again out of the blue, mm. unless if someone intends and has a directed motive as to why they do a particular thing. That was one of the things that I said. Sure. And the in depth is when you are a public figure, people almost feel that they're entitled to your private life huh. or to facets of your private life. Yeah, yeah. If I see you somewhere else, no, yeah, yeah, but I, I'm not entitled to knowing what's deep within your space mm -hmm. and what's happening in your space. Mm -hmm. I don't have the right to come out and give a funuk fish or guti. Well, long long as ubutinga, no. Linga as uguti, where it comes from, from you. If I'm not telling you, and you're hearing it from some, someone else, if umuntu mklambo onozuelo, nintlo nipo, I'll come to you. If nge konzile, nge tiyazuelo, nge zwe indo ega njene. Yeah, yeah. Alright, ogo kal. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Ogo spilu kwenza galayo. Right? I find out from you, Angtati into engi izwe ngo munyo munyo. Correct. Ngi gichi me istrata so nke. Ngi yoi fafaza to everyone. Yeah. That's common decency. Correct. That's ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Hagati kwa mm -hmm. If I hear something about you, and I know you on that level, ngi akboza, gutubenza galan. If I don't know you, angi inge no we inge na, because I'm klange in a way. Sure. It has nothing to do with me. Sure. But I also understand that when you're someone that is in the public space and people follow you, mklambi kwa ni daba itanda ayu. Mm -hmm. They want to know more. Mm -hmm. It's understandable. Mm -hmm. I get it. But there are some things that into umienzaga you have to ask yourself for to know why is something like this happening? Especially mago umuntu esingam joyelanga as umuntu o papi lengalo yonjela we o flesh o impilo yaku ibega sobala like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You always have to. But even if you you know the person, even if you don't know the person, you always have to ask what is the motive, what is the intention, right? And everything that we always need to remember about any situation is there's always more to a story than what you're hearing for the first time. Umuzin hmm. for the first time. Always remind yourself, Ugati. It's so nuanced. It's, it's hold on, guys. What yeah. is the other person's yeah. side to the story? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what else happened? Yeah, yeah. I say, Shuguti, what you are saying is, is a lie. Yes. We're hearing it. Yeah. But we're not discounting it. We're not it. discounting it. And we're acknowledging it. We're respecting it. it. Yeah. We're acknowledging it. Yeah. But let's hear yeah. wh where that other person is coming from. Correct. Because even Umusu Kabana no Mundu, if you are in a conflict with someone, you're in a conflict over something and Ukona landing a boni eye to eye. You're not seeing mm -hmm. eye to eye on that particular thing. There's this person's point of view and then there's another person's point of view. And in that point of view is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Seek the truth. Don't seek the sensationalized statements that are made out there mm. because they sound good, mm, because mm, they feed the narrative. Yeah, they're well. clickbait. Yeah. They're, yo, oh, famous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't sit on the clickbait. Yeah. Search for the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. oftentimes when things like these happen, they're not coming from a point of truth. Mm -hmm. They're coming from clickbait. Mm -hmm. And they are clickbait because they have a certain intent and motive behind it. I hear you. Is that in foundationally there is a motive that we must search yes. because when we find out the motive, we will understand why a certain language is used, a certain tone is used, a certain platform is used to propel a narrative, yeah. right? Because as long as we don't understand these key elements, mm. we will just believe everything we hear in life Absolutely. and take it and take it at face value. Yeah. Um, with that said, have you been able to heal from that? And is healing, because healing is also a process. It's okay to say, I am still healing. Mm. Um, have you been able to heal from that? And is it okay sometimes to move on without healing because the parties involved are just not willing? Yeah. It is okay to move on without healing because Abandu that are involved are not interested. In okay, it. okay. They're not interested in moving forward. Mm -hmm. They're interested in maintaining this level of pain. Sure. Because it supports the narrative that they want to push. And you can't force a healing on someone. Huh. It, 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 for you to be able to heal. You take the steps to heal. You, you take the steps, but you want to heal with the Oof. person that's also been hurt. Yeah. And, and I want to say, it's not to say that the other parties are not hurt. The other parties are hurt. 
and and it's and it's fair. valid. It's, it's valid. Yeah. But in Lela, ekwenzi wanga ayo, ayiko righti. Because uguba heti guako, utata into ui twist to suit the narrative that you want to feed. Ushie itkini so emuva. Because you are acting out of hurt and pain. Right? Mm, but mm. in your pain and in your hurt, you twist it in this. Because you want that person to feel what you are feeling. Even if it was that, not that person's intent to hurt you. But because you are going through what you are going through, you want to insert that hurt back. I hear you. As I opposed you. to coming back and saying, this is what has hurt me. And then I can come to you and say, I did not do this. Mm, mm, mm. And it was not my intent for me to do yes, this. Yes, yes. Because we are born So it is okay to heal, uh, to move on without healing. Especially you. if people you. are not interested in healing sure. or reconciliation. Which is, which is painful. It's painful, but mm. to each their own. Yeah. But you can also heal without the other person. Without receiving an apology. Without receiving Correct, anything. because many of us don't yes. receive apologies in life and, and we heal and, and we are fine. Life. And that's life. That's life. You yeah. have to accept. Sure. Correct. Right. But saying you are not willing to have a sit down like this because I imagine when you're in a conflict with someone, Usala Pansi, La Aum Sabinga Pansi. Correct. Usala Pansi, now you decent people. And you don't rally people around to fight with you against this person. Mm. People that don't even know you, mm. that have the authority to say things about you when they don't even know you. Mm. You don't rally people who yeah, yeah, But am I healing? Yes, I am healing. I'm healing. I've not healed. We are all healing. Because this thing that happened, it didn't just affect me. Correct. It's your family. It, it affected everyone. Mm -hmm. It affected my husband. Mm -hmm. Because he is my husband. Correct. You know, it affected... All of us, but um, we are healing, and we will get there. Um, but ekwene ni umden we are dingan. Umunengan. Umdeni che. Umunengan. That's how we started our conversation. Yes. If yeah. umden. Community. We are dingan. Yeah. And ngia kulega uguti. I love that. Umkulu zoyens inzile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uchubu bengi buiselan. Yeah, yeah. Because izingane zia dinga umzali. And when it's your mother yeah. or your father, yeah. 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 That place could be a car, Nalo, Connor Nabobazo and Gelek. Bayas would ban Gelegil. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not they want to accept Wutibam Gelegil or not, or Quab, I guess it force. But Bayas would ban a I love that because what I'm sensing from you is that fundamentally we are sure I'm praying for my family. That's yes. what a mother does. Yes. I've got a motherly instinct, whether I'm a mother or not. I've got a motherly instinct that says I am building a family. This is a home and everybody who's connected to me and my husband is my family. Yes. And as they are my family, I want warmth. I want kindness. I want people to be able to draw from the reservoir of this family, as I said, yes. and, and that builds community. And I don't want it to be forced. Umuntumele <laughs> azangenel. Into, I ang ang port umuntu uguti angen. The same way nga porta nga umuntu guta bahame. You know what I mean? Nothing should be forced. You create a warm environment when there is willingness, where the inclusi yo iya vuma fully uguti. This is what I would also like. That's why in Gishu uguti, umden umden we are dingana. Whether you accept it or not, umden we are dingana. Whether you accept it or not, ingan is yet in right? Yeah, yeah. Whether you allow yourself to be ingan emzalin or not, or not, umzal <laughs> umzaluak, right? I get jig. That's a sometimes see a set up on what you know, what you shoot and tan. No, umzal mother to know, uno discipline parrot, sure, uno work a parrot, uno because if. Let's think about when we were growing up. Yeah, Imagine if yeah. our parents just said yes, yes to everything. everything. Yeah. We would not know discipline. Yeah. We would not know intro nepo. Yeah. I'm not I'm not by any way insinuating anything, anything, anything about anyone. Yeah. About anyone. Yeah. And you show you uguti. Kuna mikoma, there are ways in which kukuli swangayo ngazo ingani. Umzali magati kanga and agashugutungobaga tand. 
usho ngoba uthi ngifuna ukuthi ukukhula ngendlela kanjena uya nga understand ukuthi ngithini manje ithi yebe into eneso sengishona ukuthi kube kanjena now if you don't want to accept it beso ufuna ukuthi kube ngathi awuthandwa you will find issues with whoever whether it's a friend a, a, a family member a parent ngoba uwalila ngedetile uzobona ukuthi no kushuthu nomuntu akangithanda angenzi siqhwense ukuthi abantu bayazi ukuthi this is the case can't you know it's not the case siyakha sakhimindeni correct sikhulise ingane there's correction and discipline there's in building correction and discipline yes. because the world out there is rules it needs you to be umuntu or disciplined ohloni mm. phayo mm. mm. I mean, I could say, if you are disciplined and you are respectful, mm, mm. that is why I'm it's also by God's grace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The world shifted, but the people that remained true remained true. So, sure. that is why to this day, I'm not going to say because it is so, it is so. Without us having to advocate or contest anything. That's why I can't Whether Bafunu or not, it's up to them. Let's speak about the nice side. Let's speak about the nice side. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Um... I, I always refer to this analogy of, of, of marriage being a container of love. So mm-hmm. the glass is the container, the cup is the container, mm-hmm. and the water or the tea and the coffee is the love. Mm-hmm. And the taste of it is because of how we treat each other and how we love each other. Mm-hmm. Um, is that what love and marriage has meant to you? <laughs> yes. Uh, I like the analogy that you use because when I look at this glass, um, if if there's an empty glass on the other end, you can only pour into something where something is full. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. if it's empty and it's empty, what are you pouring into? There's nothing into? to pour. There's nothing to, to pour. Into each other? Into each other. Yeah. So, love and marriage, yes. Um, if you've got so much to give, mm. then you can easily pour into someone else because you've been fed, you've been poured into as yeah, well. Yeah. And for me, that's what my love and my marriage is about. Mm. We are pouring and filling into each other because we come from spaces where somewhere along the lines we experience pouring into. I hear you. I hear and you. because we know and the feeling of being poured into. Mm. Sorry, I just moved your mic. It's okay. It's we okay. are pouring <laughs> into each other like that. So... Yeah. Yes, but um, love is also about forgiveness and second chances. Yeah. Um, because Third, fourth, fifth Third, chances. Fourth chances. Because God is doing the same with us. Every day. Yeah. We are sinners. Yeah. I mean, I'm Christian. Yeah. We are sinners. Yeah. No mas nga born, see on. But unkulunkulu says a stonella. Yeah. And that's, that's agape love. That's everlasting <laughs> love. It sees... Unwavering yeah, love. Yeah, it sees no boastfulness. Sure. It um, it's the kind of love that forgives, because mm-hmm. that's how Unkulunkulu also loves us. Mm-hmm. So love is it's 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 all encompassing. It's it's second chances, third chances, forgiveness, as long as what the core that has kept you or the, that has connected you guys is maintained. Yeah, it will keep you guys together. I I I I, I absolutely love that. We, we're nearing the end of our conversation. It's so nice. This is a part of the five. Do you think Ayanda Banda is living her why and she's found it? I'm living my answer prayers. Okay. Oof. I'm living my answer prayers. Um, Mina, Gashe Gashe, I would like to say, Gutu Konke Engi Yiko. Is because of God. Even in every challenge, mm. because of God. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. living my answered prayers. Sure. My career, I studied politi- political science. Look at I, the end, <laughs> I ended up being in performing arts. Yeah. I've always loved the arts. Yeah. I've always loved performance. I didn't know that I was an actress. Yeah. Um, a good one. A, a good one at that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I didn't know this. But Unkulunkulu has a way of ensuring Uguti 
No mintunga saibo nunga yaz, ngizo kutirecta la umelu ya kutu. Namunga iba legela nzo kubuiz. Nzo kubuiz. Oshalu uz tole ugu entertainment industry uz buzugu ti hama gonna survive the space that is so challenging. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. is not stable in a way. Yeah. But unkulu unkulu uti ngena la. Yeah. U, 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 chona. Mase tuwa iale. We are now working together. But in the in the belly of the whale, we are where well, you need to, to be. be. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. Why? Because God knows why He orders and He directs your steps Correct. where you need to go. Yeah. I'm in this industry that I did not think I would even be in, but I'm doing so well by God's grace and favor. Mm. And I'm asking myself, how did I even get here? It was because of God. Yeah. Even in my life and in my relationship and in my marriage. I have come as far as I have come. Because Whether it's my uh, my my life, my marriage, uh, my work, career, everything. my work. Yeah. He's always at my back. Yeah. I always used to pray. Even when I was going to auditions. No man guy say tola ngangkulunkulu help me learn something about myself in this audition Oof. and where I'm going so that it contributes to the next place that I'm going to. And lo and behold, I'm here because of answer prayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here because of answer prayers. I love that help me learn something about myself in yeah. this audition. Because to me, it, it comes as I'm rejected, but I'm not ejected from mm. life. I, mm. it's, it's a moment of rejection. Mm. But in the rejection, there is a lesson. In the rejection, gonna score. Yes, gonna and, score. and if I think of rejection as absolute end, then I will never find never the school get, in it. And you'll never get to where you want to go. Yeah. Because you're always looking at the rejection as a give up and walk away. Yeah. No. Yeah. You no know is, okay, back to the drawing board. Hmm. What do I do differently? Hmm. Yes. So for me... I'm truly living my answered prayers in my life, in my marriage, in my work. Last but not least, what's that one thing in life you know for sure? God always has my back. Hmm. And I was never, ever designed to fail. Hmm. And I will never fail. Not designed to fail. I'll always win. Hmm. I will always win. I'll pray win. over that tonight. I'm not designed to fail. Because I was not designed to fail. Yeah. I was not designed to break. Yeah. God always has my back. No ma gungenze gani in life. No ma gungazula gungazula gwe vungu vungu ezinjani. No ma ngatanga na rabantu abanjani abasose oku ubinga we. I was never designed to break or fail. I'll always win because God always has my back. That's the one thing I know for sure. Um saba ungasha my world may crumble around me. O o o job lost his whole family, his children. Every, his wealth, everything. But he said, you know what? I'm going to keep my faith in God. Mm. And what happened when he did that? God responded and doubled the favor because he kept his faith. Why? Because God always knew oh, this one. What was what, the one invite to Satan? What was it? Do everything to him. Just don't take his life. You can do everything to him. But I will show you oh, he will remain faithful. And even if he doubted sometimes, what God do? and keep my faith in God. As long as God is still God in my life, that is enough. And what did God do in response? He doubled his favor. Sure. That's how I know God always has my back. Yeah. I can lose everything. I can lose material stuff. I can lose people around me. But in everything, I still have Nkulunkulu, and all things work together for good mm, for mm. those who love and trust in the Lord. Mm, mm. Open quotation marks. God always has my back. Full stop. I will never be discarded by God. Close quotation marks. I am the bandla. Thank you so much you. for blessing us with your time and privileging us with the opportunity to learn so much from you. Um, my takeaway, if anything, is that God has my back from this conversation. And thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank mm -hmm. you for your openness. But thank you for your professionalism. Thank you. As well. Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. I'll see you on the next episode.
Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor to ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.